Welcome to the special edition of Plaid Lattes. In today's video, I will be reading a short story I wrote. If that's something you want to see, then do not adjust your screen. Halloween, the night for tricks and treats. A once powerful holiday for witches of old, now had a different power. The night children ran free, demanding treats from strangers or promising a trick in return. Not to say bad things don't happen, but in this sleepy town, it had been years since a child had disappeared, and the kids that did were always troublemakers. Every child had been told the story. Children who misbehave on Halloween would disappear, never to be seen again, or so the story went. The Halloween wasn't fun for everyone. Tim had never experienced the joy of just digging into his hall from the night, a severe peanut allergy, and his parents would go through his candy. They always gave him safe candy in return, but it just wasn't the same. Last year, Tim had snuck out and smashed the pumpkins of everyone whom had given him peanut-filled candy. He'd of course been caught and grounded, so this year he had a plan. Ellie was Tim's best friend for 10 of their 12 years of life. She was usually the level-headed one, but this year, however, Ellie decided to join the fun. After all, it really wasn't fair that Tim always missed out. In order to avoid the trouble, they had come up with a plan. Go to the best houses first, then any place that wasn't being closely watched was fair game. With Ellie being lookout, hopefully, they could cause a little trouble without getting in any. At promptly six o'clock, the two friends met, Tim getting taller by the minute. His hazel eyes and brown mop tops slicked back for his Halloween costume. Ellie had sandy blonde hair, brown eyes, and while small, could out tree climb any boy in their class. She was clad in the same witch's costume she'd worn the year before. You do know dressing like that every year won't make you one, right? Tim teased. Okay, blood boy. And what do you hope to get out of dressing like an ancient dead guy? Simple. To live forever. Mwahahaha. You're such a goob, Ellie laughed. So let's get our let's go get our treats and then dole out some tricks, she grinned. The two took off, ringing bells and singing the songs of carefree children, enjoying all the night had to offer. Okay, I think this is enough candy. Let's go cause some trouble. Tim gestured toward their first target. The next half hour was filled with sounds of beautifully carved pumpkins being smashed and bells being rung as the two sets of feet tore off into the night. Okay, it's getting late. Let's do one more and head home before we get caught, Ellie suggested to her friend, who nodded in agreement. They walked further into the old, older part of town until Tim stopped dead, causing Ellie to walk into him. Hey, did you forget how to put one foot in front of the other? No. Look at this place, it's perfect. They both stared in awe at the giant house, gray, brick covered with ivy, actual gargoyles sitting guard on the roof, a turret on each side, with a point in the middle resembling a bell tower. This place didn't need to decorate for Halloween, and yet five amazingly carved jack-o'-lanterns adorned its wraparound porch. How have I never noticed this place before? Tim asked, stepping through the iron gate. Whoa, well, wait. I've never noticed this place either, Ellie stuttered, grabbing her. We don't come down here often during the day. I'm sure it looks more boring. Come on, one last place. This one is perfect. The only lights on are in those pumpkins. They made their way quickly up the steps. Tim carefully selected which one to smash. Keep watch, he hissed, noticing Ellie looking around. Thwack! The pumpkin made a strange, loud noise as it cracked in the grass below causing the two to make bewildered eye contact. Run as fast as you can! Both looked as a kid ran through the gate and disappeared into the night. That kid's costume was so stupid. Who dresses up like disco? Tim laughed, turning to see the terror on Ellie's face as two hands grasped her shoulders. Now that wasn't very nice. I've had that one for so long, the woman disappo disappointedly mused. Well, you two better come inside, or you'll be in serious trouble with your parents. Still gripping Ellie's shoulders, they all went inside, noticing all the lights were on, 
even though it does not appear that way from the outside. Wow, you have beautiful antiques, Ellie gasped. My mother loves antiques. Well, thank you. Call me Sarah, the woman smiled. In the light of the house, they could see she was dressed in black lace with a stunning curvy figure, long curly black hair, offset by pale skin and striking green eyes. You're beautiful, mused Ellie. I've never seen you in town. Oh, I'm only here for Halloween. It's my favorite night, Sarah laughed. Are you going to say anything? Tim had walked behind the two, staring at his feet the whole time. Now he looked up. Are you going to call our parents? He asked sheepishly. Well, I think we can avoid that, Sarah remarked as both children looked at her hopefully. But you must help me in the kitchen. I have to get to a party later, and I'm not ready. But if you help me, I'll even let you have some pumpkin candies. I'm famous for them, she smiled, putting both, putting both kids at ease. The kitchen was large with a table and a few chairs in the middle. As they sat down, the two noticed a fireplace lit in the corner. This house is very old. People used to cook in that fireplace. Now I just use it to make the kitchen seem cozier, Sarah explained. That's kind of neat. I'm good at helping in the kitchen. I help my mom all the time. I just can't touch peanuts. Tim was so happy he wouldn't get grounded. You're so nice for this. Thank you, Ellie smiled. They were showing what to do and got to work preparing kebabs. Then Sarah set can the candies on the table and went back to the stove. You don't have to eat them all, <laughs> Ellie laughed. As Tim with his mouth full shrugged. I don't want to seem rude. Besides, these are great. He held the bowl towards Ellie and took a couple, trying them with a smile. I'm so glad you like them. And thank you for being such a help. I'm sorry I smashed your pumpkin. Tim gulped. Oh, don't worry, sweetheart. You're making up for it. But I did like that one. He was always humming 70s music. I really liked that. The kids exchanged looks. Um, pumpkins? Don't hum, Ellie finally piped up. Oh, mine do. It'll be nice to have some fresh conversation, Sarah laughed. Ugh, I don't feel well, Tom grabbed his stomach. Don't worry, it won't last, Sarah laughed. What did you do to him? Ellie rushed to her friend's side. Did you poison him? Not quite. He'll be fine. Better than fine, you might say. He'll be gored. Laughing at her own joke, she didn't notice Ellie and Tim gesturing out a plan. This house isn't normally here, is it? She accused. Sarah shook her head. You're a witch, and that boy that told us to run, he was the jack-o'-lantern Tim smashed. Well, more of a Ralph-o'-lantern, but yes. Sarah smiled, turning, but the smile faded as the children rushed towards her, shoving her in the kitchen hearth. How dare you, she screamed as the kids made a break for it. How did you know that would work, Tim asked as they ran for the front door. You know I love fairy tales. Don't worry, with her dead, you'll be fine, Elle turned looking at her friend. Are you sure, Tim asked, grabbing his stomach, looking at Elle. As she did the same pained look on her face. I'm sorry. He could feel a change happening. His fear gripped him. He yelled out, Eleanor, run! Then a jack-o'-lantern dropped to the floor softly, candle flickering inside. No! Elle screamed as the witch walked toward her. Oh, good. A new, a new addition, she smiled evilly. Actually, too. I think an even number will be great. How? Why? How? Honey, it's Halloween, the night any witch can come back and use her magic on mortals. Why? <laughs> she laughed. You smashed my pumpkin, and bad children must be taught a lesson. But I pushed you in the fire. That's supposed to stop witches. Oh, sweet Eleanor. This isn't a fairy tale, and in real life, you don't win so easily. But hey, someday, maybe someone will smash you. And you can try again. Elle opened her mouth, but felt herself change. 
She was looking up at the witch, a million things going through her mind, front and center, the worry that her and Tim would rot away. Don't worry, the place we're going, nothing ages. Even the squash stays fresh. <laughs> Two friends were placed on the porch with the other victims. They watched the sky change. No longer did the house stand in the old part of town. Now in another world. Back home, Tim and Elle's parents were panicking, terrified of what could have happened. Yet no one would listen to the young boy who'd showed up looking for his parents claiming that he'd been trapped by a witch since the 70s for smashing a pumpkin. Amber alerts went out. Search parties were formed. This poor lost Ralph was carted off to the psych ward. If only the local sheriff had looked at the missing persons board, he would have recognized Ralph's picture. Last seen, October 31st, 1975. But now, two more missing children would one day become a part of the legend. Of the witch who steals bad kids on how we'll figure a way out l i promise tim thought to his friend you and your stupid peanut allergy l groaned angrily watching his other witches walk past them admiring the new decorations hey at least the candy was good tim joked you're an idiot so that's it for a short scary story Hope you enjoy. Leave a like. Let us know. Till then, remember, the interwebs are watching you.